This is my car. This is my wife's car. And this right here is the power supply tester I just bought from Chroma System Solutions that cost more than both of them combined. Why am I smiling? Because with this, I'm gonna be able to separate the wheat from the chaff. The good from the bad. We're gonna be able to take power supplies like this and blow them the freak up. But of course, in order to do that, we're gonna need to open it up, aren't we? Which is gonna involve some uh, <coughs> heavy tools. Ugh. Oh, I'm not supposed to do that? You can see he's genuinely upset. I six months researching this. What are you doing, man? We're gonna have some fun today. And it's gonna be sponsored by Future Linus here. Didn't get the memo till we were done filming, but apparently this video is sponsored by Seasonic. Imagine having the stones, the swagger, to sponsor content about a piece of testing equipment that has the potential to make your products look bad compared to the competition. Clearly, they've got a lot of confidence in their products, and you can check out Seasonic Power Supplies at the link down below. You swear on your mother's life that this is the good shiz, right? That's what Seasonic said. They helped me spec this, and then I basically just got their spec, just the newer stuff. The newer stuff. So yeah. we have better power supply testing equipment than a tier one power supply manufacturer. And I'm assuming they've upgraded since we talked, so maybe. How strong are your wrists? Pretty good. I didn't bring an impact driver, and there's a lot of screws up there. Oh, LTT, wait, what? Well, LTTstore.com? You don't even have like a power anything? No. Oh. I, just use your guns, man. Oh my god. I love our screwdriver, but these are a little long to do by hand. There's like 25 of them. It's all about right tool for the job, right? How's your arm? Man, I almost beat you. I got eight of them out already. <laughs> Dude, we couldn't find impact drivers. There's a drill. Uh -oh, yeah, drill Let me load up an impact driver and then start working on these side ones. Huh? Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Whoa, this is looking real scientific. Yep. Holy shit. Okay, come here, this is really cool. Now, it's all fine and good to put stickers on your package. Fragile, this side up. We all know what couriers do. They see that, they go, ha, 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 let's play point the arrow down, right? Well, this guarantees they never did it. If this indicator is red, make a notation of delivery receipt, blah, blah, blah. See, watch, boom, perma red. That means it stayed right side up the whole time it was in transit. Super cool, right? Now that he's crumpled up the serial number, in theory, these have serial numbers on them so that you know they weren't switched in transit. Is this open now? Hold on, oh, hold on, hold on, wait. Okay, no, wait. it's okay, it's fine. We gotta, it's okay. No, we gotta get the moment. No, I know, I know. It's... One, two, two three. three, let's go. Come on! Well, fudge. Here we go! No, it's, it's... Well, that was a little anticlimactic. Check it out, there's another one inside. Come on, David, check. So this indicates not only did it stay right side up, but it didn't tip because you can see the sand will like go to one side or whatever. Test instrumentation and automated test systems, power conversion. Wow, free USB key. Uh, no, no. What, that's the, what, I think, no? I think that's the software, software key. Software, yeah. I don't know if, it, if it's true in the new software we're getting, but the old software, that's the license key. If you lose that, it's 70 grand to replace it. 70 grand? I, I'm pulling the number up my butt, but it's it's expensive. Don't lose that. No, 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 no. Put, 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 put it back. How much power can this whole thing draw, or does um, it, the whole thing so draw? So, 208 three phase at 50 amps is what it's rated for. What the fuck? That's what- 10,000 watts? That's what the cable's rated that, for. This is rated for 10,000 watts? Uh, maybe. Um, I haven't done the conversion in my head, but we can only draw the maximum that the source will allow, and that's 3,500 watts. 3,500 watts. That means that we'll be able to test basically any power supply on the market because anything over about 2,000 watts is gonna trip a North American breaker, and anything over about, what is it, like 2,500, 3,000 watts? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. gonna trip a European we're, breaker we're, anyway. We're on the limit of what Europe can do. Oh, this is really cool. You can see from the plug, we've got a ground connection to this gigantic bare metal strip here. And then unlike a normal server shelf, these are bare metal as well and they're screwed in like this. What that means is that every single shelf, every piece of metal in this entire enclosure is grounded. So in a production environment, that's important because 
Well, if a if a live lead were to short to the chassis, yeah. and an operator was touching it, you want to make sure the operator isn't the lowest path to ground. Right. So we'll have all of these green wires everywhere. Right. And even on the powder coated stuff, it'll go straight through. The, they'll powder coat afterwards and make sure the stud touches the actual metal. That's also why the whole thing's enclosed, locked, safety labels, the whole shebang. Okay, there's. Right, shall we take off? There's all... a monitor. Yeah, there's a computer. Wow. There's a computer in here. Comes with a little shelf and everything. Yeah. Look at that. I, I asked for the shelf. Oh, okay. How much did I pay for this shelf? One hundred and thirty thousand dollars. No, no, I mean just. I have no idea. You, you didn't know. even ask what the different options are worth or anything, like to decide if we could have provided our own shelf, maybe. Like, how much did I pay for this Logitech mouse? Ooh, not even a rechargeable battery in there, brother. Is there a computer? Did I pay for a computer? Yeah, it's industrial grade Dell computer. Oh my god. Oh, look, it comes with a key. What is with all of these discs? Why do we have discs? You even included a USB key. Are they just all the same thing or what? Like, oh my god. Kyle? Yes? They don't expect us to build our own bloody cable harnesses here, do they? Those are like 24 pin ATX pins. Okay, okay. And well, here's a 24 okay, pin well. ATX connector. Do I have to like build my own DIY power supply here or what? Why are you telling me this like you're the one who's actually going to be building this stuff? Well, Do you I, understand how configurable this machine is? I, I Trust mean, me, you want to build your own cables. You see all of these ones? Yeah. You see how it says load two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah, those are these guys. Okay, yeah, so yeah. if these like overcurrent or something, then would they blow their load? No. <laughs> no. Oh. You know what, we'll go through it once we actually do a rundown of each of the modules. Um, and I'll explain why those are important. Yeah, check it out. I made a whole thing. Oh, they actually connect together? That's yeah. really cool. Boop. Yeah, that's but, not in, but yeah. yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should go bottom to top. Okay, bottom Reason to top. being, because that's where power comes in. So this is a 3,000 volt amp AC source. So we'll be able to test any PC power supply on the market and realistically, just about any other power supply as well. So this is also a three-phase power supply. It can do both single and three-phase, um, but we only have it hooked up for single phase right now because we're only targeting ADX power supplies. Eventually we might do server stuff, but that's in the future. What's right. cool about this is it can do anything with the power. So it can do 240 volts, 50 hertz for right. European brothers. It can do 11060 or 12060 right, for, for, over here. for North America. It can also start injecting like yeah, can we simulate dirty power? Dirty like power, bad power. Like bad power. So we can br we can brown cool. out the power. We can overvolt the power. We can inject harmonics into the actual AC sine wave. So like if you had a blender or some crap yeah, running like elsewhere on the circuit, very, and or it's... like a very noisy like motor somewhere that like right. is feeding very like dirty harmonics like a blender. back. Yeah, yeah, sure, like a blender. Yeah, or yeah. microwave. Was, I mean, or was on the yeah, same. Yeah, there's circuit. no motor in a microwave except to spin the turntable. That's probably not the problem. Yeah, probably the worst thing to compare it to. <laughs> But it, it, it can do that, and it can do that all automatically. What does like, this do? All right, so that's an on-off controller. It turns stuff on and off. Oh my um, god, really? That's all it does? Uh, yeah. What does um, this do? Short circuit protection and OVP tester. So basically, oh. that will short out the power supply, the most fun test ever. As right. well as it will overvolt the power supply. So it takes. This is one of our likely fire starters, then, right here. Maybe. So, what it does is it'll take voltage from the DC source and add it to the output from the power supply. So, if you're getting 12 volts out, uh -huh. it will just like add a couple of voltage to that and see if the power supply Goes, trips. Holy it, crap, this is not supposed to be happening. And, and cuts, and cuts it. Yeah, right? You claim this is where things get interesting. As we were talking about before, this is the Anderson connection panel. Yes. These all hook into these loads, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay. And that's basically the output of the AC source. So that's where we plug power supplies into. Got it. Yes. Okay. So after, then... after adapting it from that to a normal plug. Right. So our AC source is as clean or dirty as we spec it to be. Yes. And this is effectively your wall outlet at home. Yes. But, you know, yeah. within a well, So the idea with this is to actually have a test enclosure that we put down here yeah. and plug into this. Or we even make a back plane that just yeah. slots in, right? Because these are all very precisely put in place. Right. So we could easily have like a PCB with mm -hmm. Anderson connectors, the PCB mount ones, not regular ones. Sure. That we could just slide in. And there's power. These are all your signal stuff that goes up to um, this guy and this guy, yeah. and these are all these, 
and um, these channels, I believe, are temperature sensing channels that is a byproduct of this guy. Okay. Cool. So this is basically the business end where we plug the victims in. And the idea is that by having an enclosure here, we can control the environment that the power supply is operating in so that we could run any number of different permutations, clean power, dirty power, cold, hot. There's a more practical thing for an enclosure. So when power supplies blow up, we don't... Yeah, that too. This? Yeah, what's this uh, boy? So it's a timing noise analyzer. The module has a whole bunch of slots that you can stick into it. What these do is monitor all the signals, right? So if you have 12 volts, 5 volts and 3.3, this is monitoring it from a pass-fail event. So we don't actually get data out of this. Okay. So you set limits and this will see if it breaks those limits. Right? Got it. Well, where do we get data from then? Uh, this guy. Okay. Oh, and that's missing. That's the oscilloscope. I see. They allow a variety of third-party oscilloscopes. We okay. haven't decided on one yet, but that's oh. going to go there, a four-channel oscilloscope, and that will give you pretty graphs and like actual things that people can understand, right. where this will give you the pass-fail data. Now, here's something I need to understand a little bit better. If I were low... Oh, wait. No, I get it. Oh, my God. Why do we need so many of okay, them? Okay, cool. I spent the majority of time like gaming the system to get us this. The idea of these is we have 400 watts, 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 400 These are eight 400 watt loads. And one dual 100 watt load. So these can, it can do 200 watts total, but 100 on each channel. Mm -hmm. The idea is, this is for your five volts and your 3.3. Most power supplies are under 100 watts on those rails. Yeah, very There little. are a few that are above. I'm only older stuff. The newer stuff, the 1600 watts can sometimes do 125. These loads can be connected in parallel, right? Got so it. you can set all of these guys to 12 volts. The reason why I went with so many is something called slew rate. So that's the rate at which these loads can change their demand, right? Okay. So each one of these loads can change their demand at six amps per microsecond. So you take six amps, you multiply it by 12, you get uh, 60, 72. So yeah. 72 watts. Each one of these can change their load at 72 watts per microsecond. With all eight of these loads, yeah. we can change the, the, the rate of power draw at 760 watts per microsecond. Okay. The idea was to electronically simulate a, a 3090 kicking on. But then NVIDIA released 4090 and I was like, I don't have enough space. So the future goal is just to have a test bench right next to it where you can just literally hook the power supply instead of hooking into this, hook it into an actual computer and oh simulate God. a real world example. Well, think that about- it won't be as repeatable though. No, but think about it this way. If someone's complaining about a certain power supply blowing up under certain architecture, you can build that architecture, get the power supply, put the power supply down and monitor the voltages as it's happening And then we life. could create a simulated load based on yeah. what we monitored and find out if anything will yeah. blow up. You hired a guy to automate GPU testing. Just right. get him to get a script that cranks it to like 150% right, and just okay. sends it. As we get more experience using this, I'm assuming we're gonna come up with our own stuff. Cool. And then what do these do? So, uh, single phase power meter. Yeah. So basically efficiency. So if we want oh, okay. to, if we want to test uh, 80, 80 plus, 80 plus or, call, yeah, whatever. Or maybe call, something more meaningful like or whatever. Like 90 plus. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. So that, that just monitors your power through. And then this is, just looks like a basic ass multimeter. Yeah, digital multimeter. So it's got, it's got a... Um, if we have an oscilloscope, do we need this? There's a reason why we need it. I've forgotten it. Um, I'm gonna blame. I'm gonna blame food again. Um, you know what I've forgotten? Our sponsor, C Sonic. Man, those guys never cease to amaze me. Great people, great power supplies. I mean, clearly, because if they didn't have the confidence to know this thing is gonna make them look good rather than bad, why would they have gotten involved in helping us spec it? This is, like I said, very similar to the unit they have, although ours is a little bit newer unless they upgrade, which means that if they're doing a great job of designing their power supplies, there shouldn't be any surprises. So go check them out at the link down in the video description. They've got long warranties, great efficiency, just they're quiet. What, what, what else can you ask for? If you guys think Kyle and I are brutal with each other, you wouldn't believe what doesn't make it into the videos. We just uploaded an exclusive on floatplane.com of me and Jake, and it gets pretty spicy. BMWs are bad cars, Jake. Come at me.